In the heart of a village, swathed in the thick fog of secrecy, there stood an ancient, weather-beaten house that crouched at the edge of despair and desolation. Its windows, like the hollow eyes of a forgotten skull, gazed endlessly at the decaying splendor of its garden, where once laughter might have echoed, now only the whispers of the past lingered. The villagers spoke of it in hushed tones, the dwelling of the doll-maker, a craftsman of unparalleled skill, whose creations were as beautiful as they were unsettling. One dusky evening, as the sun dipped below the horizon, painting the sky in shades of crimson and gold, a young woman named Eliza, her curiosity piqued by tales woven into the fabric of the village's history, approached the creaky gate. Mr. Hawthorne, she called tentatively, her voice a delicate intrusion upon the eerie silence that clung to the place like cobwebs. The door creaked open, revealing a figure as thin and pale as the dolls he was famed for, his eyes reflecting a soul that had seen too much. Why do you come here, child? he asked, his voice a gentle echo from the shadows. To learn, she replied, a determined glimmer in her eye, unaware of the true depth of her inquiry. As Mr. Hawthorne invited Eliza into his realm of carved faces and glassy eyes, the air seemed to thicken with the dust of forgotten years. The dolls, arranged with meticulous care throughout the dimly lit room, seemed to watch, their eyes gleaming with secrets untold. They say you imbue your creations with life, Eliza whispered, her gaze locked on a particularly lifelike doll seated by the hearth. Mr. Hawthorne smiled, a grim twist of his lips. Oh, my dear, he murmured, as he gently turned the doll's face towards the light, revealing eyes too real, too knowing. They never left, he said, his voice a whisper, sending a shiver down Eliza's spine as the doll's eyes blinked slowly, a silent witness to the curse that bound them to this world. Eliza's fascination with the doll maker's craft turned into a haunting obsession as days melded into nights, each hour spent under the watchful gazes of the silent figures that populated Mr. Hawthorne's shadowed workshop. The dolls, with their intricately painted faces and dresses sewn from whispers of the past, seemed to murmur secrets in the dim light, secrets that Eliza felt compelled to uncover. There's a story behind each one, Mr. Hawthorne would say, his hands deftly caressing the wooden curves of a doll's cheek, a story that ended, yet somehow never did. One evening, as a storm brewed outside, casting erratic shadows across the room, Eliza found a doll that bore an uncanny resemblance to a villager who had vanished years ago, her name lost to whispered rumors. Mr. Hawthorne, this doll, she looks like the baker's daughter, the one who... Eliza's voice trailed off as she held the doll, its eyes a mirror of a soul once alive. The doll maker's eyes flickered with a dark glee, a stark contrast to his usual placid demeanor. Indeed, she was a special one, full of life and laughter, he said, taking the doll and placing it back on its pedestal with a care that seemed almost reverent. They all were once, but this village, it consumes, and I, I preserve. The wind howled, rattling the windows, as if angry voices from the past were clamoring to be heard, to break through the barrier of silence that Mr. Hawthorne had so meticulously maintained. As the storm reached its crescendo, the power flickered and went out, plunging the room into darkness. In the flashes of lightning, Eliza saw the dolls moving, their stiff limbs jerking unnaturally as if trying to free themselves from an invisible hold. They're restless tonight, Mr. Hawthorne whispered, his voice barely audible over the roar of the storm. They sense a kinship with you. Panic clawed at Eliza's heart as she felt a cold, small hand grasp hers in the darkness. But when the lights blinked back to life, there was nothing holding her, only the dolls sitting serenely in their places and Mr. Hawthorne watching her, a knowing smile playing on his lips. Some bonds, he said, are too deep to be seen. Eliza realized then that the line between the living and the crafted had blurred, leaving her to wonder which side of it she truly belonged. On the night of the village's grand festival, when lanterns hung like stars fallen to earth, casting a warm glow on the cobblestone streets, a palpable unease settled over the celebration. Eliza, her senses heightened by her experiences in the doll maker's world, felt a sinister undercurrent beneath the laughter and music. The dolls, she noticed, 
were no longer in the confines of Mr. Hawthorne's shadowed workshop. They populated the edges of the crowd, motionless yet eerily vigilant. It's time they took their rightful place, Mr. Hawthorne whispered to her, his presence suddenly beside her, as if conjured by the night itself. As the clock tower chimed the midnight hour, a hush fell over the village square. The dolls, as if animated by some unholy will, began to move among the revelers, their steps silent but purposeful. Screams shattered the night as the villagers realized the horror unfolding around them. The dolls were not just moving, they were seeking, exacting vengeance upon those who had wronged their creator. Why? Eliza gasped, horror-struck, as she clung to Mr. Hawthorne's arm. Because they are my justice, he replied, his eyes alight with a fervor that chilled her to the bone. They do what flesh and blood cannot. They remember. They avenge. In the chaos, as flames began to lick the edges of the square, ignited by fallen lanterns and unchecked fear, Eliza saw the true horror of Mr. Hawthorne's curse. The doll maker himself, under the baleful gaze of the moon, began to change, his flesh stiffening, his expressions freezing into a grotesque semblance of the dolls he created. I am the last, he cried, a wooden tear streaking down his cheek, cursed to remember, to make them remember. As the fire encroached, the villagers fled, leaving behind the burning effigies of their sins. Eliza, alone in the aftermath, realized the dolls were no longer there. They had vanished, leaving only Mr. Hawthorne, forever trapped in his wooden form, a silent sentinel of a night when the boundary between the Maker and his creations had dissolved entirely. In the cold light of dawn, the village square lay in ruin, the aftermath of the night's horrors etched into the charred remains of the festival decorations. Eliza, her eyes wide with the fresh memories of the night, wandered among the wreckage, the image of Mr. Hawthorne's transformation haunting her every step. The villagers, those who dared return, whispered in hushed tones, their glances darting to the doll maker's now silent workshop, as if expecting the wooden effigy of their once neighbor to come striding out to condemn them once more. It's over, they murmured to one another, yet the uncertainty in their eyes told a different story. Eliza, driven by a resolve to confront the remnants of the curse, approached the workshop. The door, once an imposing barrier to the curious, now hung askew, a silent invitation to the secrets that lay within. Inside, amid the scent of burnt wood and melted wax, she found Mr. Hawthorne, or what remained of him, standing amidst the ashes of his creations. I tried to warn them, a voice whispered, so faint Eliza thought she might have imagined it. Turning, she saw no one, the voice, like the man who spoke it, had become part of the air itself. The curse was not mine to control, the whisper continued, a lamentation for the lost, but theirs to understand. In the days that followed, as the village sought to bury its past beneath layers of silence and rebuilding, Eliza could not shake the feeling that the curse had not been lifted, but merely transformed. She would visit the workshop often, drawn by a morbid fascination, and there, in the corner where Mr. Hawthorne's final masterpiece stood, she noticed something unsettling. A new doll, its features eerily reminiscent of the doll maker himself, eyes that followed her movements with an intelligence that spoke of unspeakable things. We are all but dolls in the end, the wind seemed to whisper through the cracks in the walls, leaving Eliza to wonder if the true curse was not the animation of the inanimate, but the inescapable fate of becoming what we fear most. As autumn claimed the village, wrapping it in a shroud of crimson leaves and early frosts, a quietude settled over the streets, a silence that spoke more of resignation than peace. The workshop, once a place of dark fascination for Eliza, had become a mausoleum of sorts, a testament to a curse that had consumed its creator. Yet, life, as it is wont to do, crept slowly back into the rhythm of village affairs, the night of horrors relegated to hushed stories before the fireplace, a chilling reminder of the past that was never fully understood. Do you think it's truly over? Eliza asked the wind, her voice a blend of hope and despair, as she stood outside the workshop, watching the leaves dance in a macabre ballet. No curse is ever truly gone, replied a voice, so like Mr. Hawthorne's that Eliza spun around, half expecting to see him standing there, a shadow among shadows. But the street was empty, 
the voice carried away on the wind that rustled through the trees, whispering secrets to those who dared listen. It was then that Eliza noticed something peculiar about the leaves at her feet. They were not just leaves, but intricately carved figures, figures that bore a striking resemblance to the villagers, each one with a pair of hollow eyes that seemed to stare into the very soul. A shiver ran down her spine as the realization hit her. The curse had not ended with the doll maker's transformation, but had simply changed hands, waiting for a new master to give it form. Eliza turned away from the workshop, her heart heavy with the knowledge that some stories, no matter how fervently we wish them to end, are doomed to be retold, reshaped by the hands of those who find them.